What's up, everyone? So uh, we were we we're building out our buttons. We realized we need these borders, so we're going to learn a couple of different ways to do border sections. But before I do that, uh, actually, I want us to make sure that we uh, save to get. We should have done that in the last episode. Um, I just forgot. But let's make sure to save. So let's. And really, the only thing we've been touching is that storyboard. So. Uh, that's all we really have to say, but we did a couple of things. We added some stack views and we added buttons. So uh, git add, uh, git commit, added, and just say started adding buttons, added outer stack view. Okay. Let's push that just to make sure that we have our code saved. Okay, so and there, like I said, there's a couple of different ways that we can change or that we can add the border color and change the border. The maybe the the most common way that people think about doing it is doing it directly in code. And again, there's a couple of different ways that we can do that. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna take a look at that. Um, the harder way to do that in code, well, right now we have this, we just have this thing that is a UI button. Oh, we can see up here in our inspector that it is of class UI button, right? So, but we don't have any properties. We don't have any properties for like border color or border width or anything like that. So we can add those in code if we want. I'm gonna give myself some room here. Okay, so instead of the main storyboard, I'm gonna look at the view controller. One way to do this would be to do it at runtime. So I can create an outlet, so I can control click, put an outlet up there, just name it all clear button. Okay. And then in the view did load, I could say all clear button dot, uh, if you looked at the documentation or, or, or whatever, if you played around for a little bit and looked at other tutorials, they would, they would show you this, what exactly what I'm about to show you. Uh, a UI button and a lot of these UI views, they have a, a property called layer, which holds additional properties like things like border color and, and border width. So we have to access the, the layer and then we can actually access things like um, border color. Border color, border width. So border color, I can say UI color dot, let's say black. One of the things you'll notice is Xcode's gonna start complaining. It's gonna say, I don't, you can't, you can't assign UI color black to the border color. And that's because it's because of kind of how these things are constructed. Uh, a layer isn't, doesn't hold the same kind of uh, properties and, and doesn't treat colors the same way as like, as a UI color, it's something else, but we can actually convert between these. So if I uh, access the properties, I can do CG color, which is just their core graphics color. It's just, it has to do with uh, some like, some, some older code related to their operating system before iOS uh, was around. So we have, we have core graphics color, um, again, you, you couldn't really know that without watching a tutorial or reading the documentation about it. So you just kind of have to, as you play around with it, you just kind of have to know or like watch these things. Um, okay, so then also layer dot, uh, let's say border width, and we'll just say three for now, just, just so that we can see an example of this, okay? Okay, so obviously that border is too big or it was way bigger than what I initially uh, what I initially showed, but also we don't really want to do this. It worked, right? We have this border, it worked, but the problem is we're gonna have a lot of buttons, right? So we, we don't want to have to create outlets for each button and then manually do all of this. So there's a, a better way to do it. So let's get rid of this code Get rid of that. Let's get rid of this outlet. 
But then also, since we created that outlet, we can kind of see uh, the IDE still thinks there's something there. We can actually clear that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna come over here to the AC button, uh, and I'm gonna right click on it. I can see those referencing outlets. Just click the little X. We don't need that anymore. So we don't. Yeah, we just we don't want to use that. Okay. So a a better way to do it is to do it. I mean, you could also do it in code, um, but a better way to do it is I'm actually going to come up here. I'm going to create a new. I think I can close this for now. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to create a new file. Okay, so uh, make sure that it's a Swift file. Uh, iOS, Swift file, click Next. I'm going to call it a ordered button. Create. Okay, so uh, we're not we're not using the foundation library, which is like the kind of like the core of Apple's library. We're going to use UI Kit because we're going to be referencing that UI button. So I'm going to create a class called ordered button. This is going to be of type UI button. Okay. Uh, so the thing that we're doing is we're using in inheritance. Right, we had learned about that before. We're going to be, we what we're saying is we want this class bordered button. We want it to be everything that UI button is. And then we're going to add some stuff like functionality to it. Okay. Uh, the thing that we're going to do here, also, we're creating this new button. One of the things that we want to do is we want to be able to access things like that border width or border color, we want to be able to access that from the storyboard. So the way that we do that is uh, with the at symbol, IB designable. So we're kind of marking this class as um, interface builder designable. It's a, it's a designable class. Okay. And then uh, we're going to create a couple of properties here. So IB inspectable. Okay. And, oh, that we're going to do, uh, we're creating, um, we're creating a new property. So ordered, oh, order color. I'm going to say it's of UI color. And we're going to be able to set this in. So this, this property doesn't exist on UI button, right? Uh, but the thing that we're going to do is by making it an, an IB inspectable, we're going to say when it gets set in uh, interface builder, we actually want it to set the real property. So we're going to say did set. And we're just going to say layer dot uh, border color equals. Border color dot CG color. Okay, so whenever this thing gets set, right, this property right here, whenever it gets set, we're going to set that layer. Okay, I'm going to do the exact same thing uh, at IB inspectable, or we're going to say border width. I'm going to say this is a CG float. And we're going to say it has a default value of zero. Did set. I'm going to say layer dot border width equals border width. Okay. Okay. So what does that what does that do for us? So now we have this class. It's marked as an IB designable class. So let's go into our main storyboard. Click on one of our buttons here, eventually we'll do all of them, but uh, open up our inspector. We can go to that class now. We can mark it as a custom class. So it knows that it's a button, so we can say this is a bordered button. Okay, and it's updating the designables. Okay, let it update. 
okay, up to date. Now we have special properties on our bordered button. Okay, so we can say, well, I want the uh, outline or the, the border color to be black. I want the width to be one, right? And you can see it kind of popping out there, right? What I actually want to do, I want it to be a pretty light border. So I'm going to mark it as 0.25. Why didn't that work? Did it work? Oh yeah, it's okay. It's there. That's good. Okay. So yeah, now I have this black border, uh, 0.25. I can actually highlight all of these now and do that exact same thing. Okay, I'm going to say, I want these to be bordered buttons. It's going to have to update those. I'm going to say, make all of these black, make all of these 0.25. Okay. Now we got, now we got those borders. Unfortunately, we can't take, we can't select items in multiple stacks. So this is why I didn't want to create all of my buttons first, because since, since I knew that we were going to create this bordered button with these properties, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to kind of show you the problem and then show you the solution so then we can just copy and paste. It becomes much easier. So within this stack, which we are going to copy and paste, we can do that same thing. So I've selected everything in this stack. I'm going to make these bordered buttons. Okay, now I'm going to change their border color to black and their border width to 0.25. Okay, cool, we got it. Now, now that we have that, we can just copy and paste again. So I'm going to make sure I selected the bottom uh, stack. Do control C, control V. Okay. And they already have everything. So same thing. Control C, control V. They already have those, those bottom buttons. So this is going to be, uh, so it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like that. So four, Six, okay. This, I want this to be that multiplication symbol. We don't have that by default. So just like what we had to do with the uh, division sign, edit, emojis, I'm just gonna use that again. You can just search for multiplication. Let me just do that again, just so you can see that. Edit, emojis, so I can search for multiply. You got a couple of different symbols. I'm just gonna pick that one. I don't need two, okay. Uh, this one, I will make it be subtract. This one, I will make it be plus. Okay. And we need one more row of buttons. Okay. This one is going to be a little bit different because there's only two buttons. Or only, only, oh, only three buttons. Okay, I'm actually going to delete this one. Okay, but these buttons are much bigger now, which I don't like. So I want to do, I, I still want them to be equal, right? But I, I kind of want this other one to be bigger than, than the other two. Okay, so how can we do that? We're going to give them equal width constraints. even though it seems like they already have equal width. So, so, oh, sorry. We don't need that equal height one. That was a mistake. Highlight this. And we're going to do equal widths. The thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the multiplier. And we actually don't need to fill equally. That's that's what's causing that break. Sorry, we should have just done that first. 
I changed the distribution on just that stack view, right? So the, because because we're changing that multiplier for like the fill or like the, the equal widths, this stack, we're just saying, hey, whatever the size of all of these objects, just fill the entire fill the entire space. But now we have a nice grid going here, right? I think I want to make this text a little bit bigger. Uh, we can still make it lined up, but it's pretty small. So I'll make it just like a little bit bigger. Okay. Okay, so we have a pretty nice looking grid right here. We have all of our buttons and operators. Obviously nothing's hooked up yet. Uh, there's really only one more piece on the layout on the storyboard that we want to add. So we're just going to add that label right now. Uh, so let's find that label. Just click and drag it. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to put borders, or I'm going to put con uh, constraints all around it. Right. Okay, so I want this to be much bigger. I want the, yeah, so I don't want it to be 17. Let's pick 50. We want it to be really big. Uh, I want it to be uh, right justified. And then actually, I, I like that it, instead of floating in the middle right there, I mean, you could have it do that, but let's just, let's make it float down at the bottom or like hug the bottom like we were doing before. Okay, so uh, this constraint's a little bit hard to grab. So the thing that I can do is go over in the inspector, uh, find that that correct one. So aligns to safe area, which one? This is the horizontal, this is the vertical. So we can see it's this one right here, align top to safe area. I'm gonna edit that. Instead of equal, I want it to be greater than or equal. And it's kind of doing that same thing before where if it needs to if it needs to stretch so that it hugs those buttons it it will but if if it gets kind of tight up against the the top it it should never go over i mean obviously it will if the screen is too small uh we're not going to deal with that right now but uh that way it's just it's it's hugging what we need um but it should it should try to stay as best as possible. It will stay on screen. Okay, uh, let's see. We got that label, we got the colors. Oh, well, we'll just, whatever. We'll just put some numbers down just as like the default text. But those numbers don't really matter. Okay, um, yeah, so this is looking pretty good. Yeah. Let's make sure that we save this. So let's put this up in GitHub and then we'll actually start hooking up some of the code. Okay, so let me just clear this. So git status. Uh, we added a whole bunch of stuff this time. Uh, so we modified the project and we added that border button, things like that. So really it, it is just one piece. I guess you could, you could separate these out. So let's do that. So let's do a git add uh, for the, well, we'll just add them all. That's fine. It was basically, it really was basically all, all one, one small feature. So git add, git commit. Completed the layout. Okay. All right. So like I said, uh, push that. And then, like I said, in the next video, we're actually going to start hooking up some of the code. At the very least, we're going to get those numbers typing on screen. All right. We'll see you in the next video.